Rob, what was what's Tony Dungy like as a coach? He, he's, I see him on TV. He's like the, one of the most respected guys on the planet, he, and I have so much respect for him. I wonder what he was like, like when he was in front of the team. With Coach Dungy, what you what you see is what you get. He wasn't he wasn't he wasn't any different off the camera. Matter of fact, I mean he's more of a he's a leader of men. Uh, he didn't just coach. He he taught you life lessons and stuff how to incorporate it to your to your, your career, your life, your family, uh, and your friends. And um, yeah, he was a uh, he was very religious with it aspect, but he didn't force religion on you. So I oh, consider God. him like he's the, the top <laughs> head coach. He, hey, he's he's number one to me. And so I'm always and a lot of the lessons he taught. No excuses, no explanations. I'd use that now, to to date. So uh, almost every day, actually. So, and he's just teaching you the value of not using excuses and uh, just get the job done. AJ, Tony Dungy. I got there after Tony Dungy. I was with Jim Caldwell his first year, but the the effects of Tony Dungy ran through that entire building for right. years and years. I, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, that guy was. Mm -hmm. Everybody talked about him. Yeah. He was as advertised. Yeah, legit. He came <laughs> yes, on our he show whenever the um, it was a couple weeks ago. It was after Drew Brees. It was after Drew right. Brees' comments. So he was scheduled to come on our show the day after Drew Brees mm -hmm. made his comments. But he was already scheduled, so he didn't. I assume because he works at NBC now, right? So and Drew Brees was supposed to work at NBC. It was just so Tony Dungy came on, and the conversation we had was just like one that just everybody <laughs> yeah. could. have It was. He's a powerful man. I'd never met him before that, yeah. though. That was my first time. Absolutely. Uh, and that was a classic Tony Dungy rebuke. He's not going to yell at you. He's not going to curse at you. He's not going to do any of the above. He's just going to come right down the line, right down the middle with it, uh, right or wrong or indifferent. I mean, he deserves the opportunity to right or wrong if you if you feel feel like he made a wrong and let it be done. Yeah. You don't you don't write anybody off. You don't burn bridges. So that's classic Tony Dungy. Mm -hmm. Those planes were awesome. That oh, first yeah. regime, that first group. Oh yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Wait, what cha hey, what changed from the first regime to the second? How do Ryan, I describe everything? Ryan Griggs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, okay? <laughs> Listen, I'm not. That was a bait by Robert, too, for me to go right there. That was 100% that. Yeah, I threw the oop, you didn't kiss. Yeah, but <laughs> the culture did change, though. Yeah. The culture completely changed. And I think that is something that gets talked about is how a winning culture is established. And it, that's not just the players or the coaches, right. by the way. That's the equipment managers. That's the athletic trainers. That's the front office. That's everybody being on. And there was just such a vast difference of the culture. Uh, and I think, I don't know, I, I, Grigson, it was his first time getting put in power, right? So I think he wanted to put his stamp on everything. And in doing so, it was just like he changed a lot of what was great about Indianapolis. And that, that team feeling and environment, like those planes trip home, AJ. He, no, they didn't do tour at all either. They did no tour at all. Hold, hold, hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, you, hold, never, what I've never mean? had one. Not, never had a shot. Are you sick? Are you serious? Yeah. When I, I got to Cincinnati my 10th year, and they all looked at me the same way. Like, when they were lining up the first game, like, no, nah, man, never had it. I don't, I don't know. It's not my – they didn't do it in Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Think about how good he would have been. <laughs> you probably could have played 20 years. <laughs> I think my knee would have felt much better. Having no cartilage, that Toradol could have helped. No coulda. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just keep in mind. Tuesday morning, <laughs> oh, it's coming. Yeah. The um, but those plane rides home. He said he didn't party that hard on the plane rides home either. But that man, that those were some of the best times I've ever been a part of. Because you got a lot of people yeah. that probably don't have that good of a time anymore, right? They're they all got families. They're all dedicated to their craft. Yeah. But those trips home, you're kind of you stuck. It, yeah, and it's just like everybody had a blast. Yeah, we have a nice adult beverage and just. Especially after a win, man, it's just it's just no better feeling, and those are the things that you you miss when you retire from the game. That locker room dynamic and those those playing rides back, I, man, you miss those, and you just having fun uh, and just talking about everything across the board. You just just having a good old time, man. That stuff never gets talked about, AJ. Yeah. The culture. How, how did, never wait, gets how did Grigson kind of 
How did Crickson <laughs> change that? So he wanna see. He does. He wants to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm curious. I mean, you. It, this well, is a public everybody, knowledge. First of all, so, I mean, like, so you what cut everybody do? who still had football left. Yeah. So let's get the hell. Hey, let's get everybody out of here. I got a text. Yeah. Joseph had died. Text me. He said, "Don't answer your phone. They're cutting everybody." I was like, "Okay, that is a hilarious thing." <laughs> it was real though. Like they were. They got rid of everybody, and then it was almost. Oh, they painted over the walls. They painted over yeah. all of our history. I was. I was very salty at that. That was very salty at that. So it was a it was a mural of basically Colts heritage, just all the just the, the Super Bowl wins, Baltimore, just, the, the, just Johnny Unitas, Peyton Manning, Edrin James, just and they just he painted over that because I but why I don't know I don't know still to this day but that rubbed me the wrong way but at the same time I'm trying to be a you know team guy but I kind of ask like okay what was the purpose of that and. The answer I got, I, I wasn't satisfied with it, but I just left it alone. So, and they were trying. The, there was a couple of speeches that were like, "We're trying to change the culture here," because we just went two and fourteen. It was like, "Yeah, but if you just look one year before that, you see the Super Bowl." Yeah, you looked just one year before about. that; it was the winningest decade right. in NFL history. So it was like, I don't know if the two and fourteen year kind of. I don't, a lot of people just acted as if that two and fourteen year was a normal thing for the Indianapolis Colts, and then the people that stuck around. It was just, and then he brought in a lot of free agents who didn't really. I don't know. It just whenever you just bring in a lot of people that don't love the team right. that you're on yet. It may, I'm not saying that they won't at some point, but it was just like a turnover of the entire roster, the building, everything just gets turned over, and you kind of just. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the guy that he said was too old is still playing. Antoine Bethea, <laughs> that he chose Leron Landry over. Yeah, now AB, yeah. by and, the way. And if you know me, I don't bite my tongue. I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'll say what needs to be said, but that was a, 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 a terrible decision. That was a very bad decision, <laughs> both for the field and the locker room, by the way. Right. Because AB was one of like the leaders of the locker room. Right. So whenever those decisions get made, you can see how some people get a little, and then whenever you get a bunch of people that come in there that don't know any better about what the Colts are, and then they start looking at people that haven't been around. It's just, a, it was a very, it just everything got flipped, and it, I guess that's going to happen with transition always. But that's that thing, that special ingredient that that first team had. You you can't replicate it, but you right. can get rid of it. Is what I learned. <laughs> I learned that you can you can get rid of it. Right. I'm, and I'm happy that uh, I feel like we landed on our feet now. You know, got Frank Wright and Chris Ballard. Ballard is a baby. He's a baby Polian. That's what that's what I call him. Uh, he goes about it the same way, building the teams uh, through the draft, and you and you add in key pieces because you you've, you've done your homework on them. So our scouting department, they they do a very extensive job of of knowing guys before they they sign anybody outside of uh, the guys being homegrown. So I, I'm very encouraged about the future for the Colts now. Look good, feel good, feel good, play good, play good, pay good, pay good, live good, live good, die good.